Hi, I'm Jay Norris, and I'm a 20-year trading floor veteran of the Chicago Board of Trade. I've written a couple of books on trading, which were published by McGraw-Hill, and which serve as the textbooks for our courses. And I'm the Director of Learning at Trading University. At the heart of what we teach at Trading University is understanding the fractal nature of markets so that we can take advantage of that design in our trading. Before we can demonstrate that, we need to define the term fractal. A fractal is the simple base component or model that when replicated becomes a much larger and more complex design, or a pattern or shape whose parts echo the whole, the study of which is called fractal geometry. Here's a weekly chart of the dollar yen and you can see that blue zigzag pattern here in the upper left and the lower right of the chart is in itself a fractal in that it's that base component or pattern from which the larger more complicated design is built from here's that same chart that same weekly chart first let's show you how to determine if a pattern is continuing to unfold the pattern on the chart itself is determined by the isolated highs and lows. In this chart, as long as it's showing a pattern of lower highs, which we can highlight with the trend line, then we have a bearish pattern. Now let's get more specific and show you how we determine the likelihood of the pattern continuing. Remember that a fractal is a pattern whose parts echo the whole. What that means is that we can break down each component individually and its construction will give us insight into the whole or the bigger picture. Fractal patterns are also scalable and that the larger patterns lend predictive value to the smaller patterns yet to develop. The easiest way to determine if a pattern or a growth curve will continue to unfold is identify an individual impulse move, that is those times when the market was clearly trending such as here or here or even here and take a geometric measurement of the price retracement which occurred before the next impulse move developed in other words let's take this overall impulse move and take that geometric measurement of this correction before the next impulse move unfolded let's do that for these lower time frame impulse moves in here and we'll show you exactly what we mean so we're just going to take this measurement here, that first impulse move right there, and we can see that retracement happened to be, oh, right around 50%. So the market's showing us a tendency to retrace 50% prior to the next impulse move down. Now that's only one, so let's take another one, give us a better idea. And here we can see that it, it goes a little beyond the 618, but we could see the price essentially stalling out between that 50% level and that 618 level. Both, those, uh, both of those are Fibonacci numbers, by the way. So we can see the market has a tendency to stall out at those levels. In trading terms, what we're doing is we're identifying trending price action here and counter-trending price action here. Trending price action right there, counter-trend action following it prior to the next impulse move. Once we identify these retracement levels, that characteristic, that geometric level of how far they're retracing, we could start to use that. So we're going to look to see if that pattern is going to be replicated in the next cycle of the pattern, and that's how we're going to determine if that pattern is going to continue or not. Now let's take the larger impulse moves, and we'll see how they, those retrace out. And we could see similar to the smaller moves here, the larger ones, same story, they're pausing, they're, they're dying out right around that 50%. So between that 50% and 618%, that's creating a band of resistance for us. As long as price, as long as the market continues to hold that band of resistance, then we can, it's easy to surmise that the pattern is still bearish. Same story here, we could see we take that impulse move, the second half of the year in 2008 same story it gets between that 50 and 68 and prices die out and the the impulse movement returns so we had an impulse move a correction followed by an impulse move as long as price is 
is failing to retrace more than that 618, then we can say that that pattern is going to continue to unfold. Here we see the same pattern again. We could take the the the, two, the 2009 high to the 2009 low, and that's going to give us that band of resistance once again between 50 and 618, and that that's helping us to determine that the the pattern here, what we would call this a negative growth pattern, is still in place. And again, we can just walk down there and continue to do that there's another one where you can see the market's very weak here it even failed to get back to the 50 percent uh, before it retraced now we come to this impulse move here from the the 2011 high to the 2011 low and what happens here well we retraced more than the 618 so uh, we had one two three you had three closes above that three green candles are cl closing above it um, essentially, if you get two closes above it, that's going to be a tip-off that potentially this pattern is reversing. So you had an impulse move retraced by more than that characteristic between 50 and 618. So that's going to tip us off that potentially the pattern is shifting. So once we see a potential pattern shift, such as we just saw here where it retraced more than that 618, what we need to do is scroll down to the lower time frames, in this case a daily chart, to see potentially if we're seeing bullish retracements, which would be characteristic of the overall trend reversal of this market. So let's see what we see as far as uh, the retracements in the bull market. Let's take this low to high retracement and see what that yields. We're taking the low here in September of 2011 to the high in late winter of 2012. And we can see it retrace more than 618. Let's use, let's break out a different Fibonacci number, the 764, and we're going to turn off the 618 and the 50%. And it just so happened, price bottomed right above that, that Fibonacci 764. Now this is characteristic, let me pull back out to a weekly chart, it'd be characteristic that when markets do reverse, they tend to give deeper, steeper retracements as the market's still making up its mind. So we see the market held a 764 there, let's go back, scroll back down to the daily, so we can see the market gave us that 764, so we want to note that because we understand the fractal nature of markets that they're scalable, that if a market's giving us a retracement on a higher time frame, we need to know that and we need to drop down again still to a lower time frame to see if it's going to replicate itself. Before we do that, I see another retracement from the low here to that high there. Let's see how that one worked out also. So we're taking this low in February to that same high. And we're seeing if that's going to help us out. And look at that once again. Where did the market bottom? Right on that 76.4 that Fibonacci level so we would definitely encourage you guys to get out your own dollar yen charts and, and see that pattern unfolding for yourself so it gave us this, the same retracement here the overall low to the high and we can see it's being replicated now so we understand that that's a tendency that we need to keep an eye on now let's again scroll down to a lower time frame this time we're going to go down to a 60 minute chart and we're going to take a closer look at the, these levels where the market happens to be bottoming. And we're going to look for a similar pattern to unfold on these lower time frames. And we'll, we'll show you that. There it is again. There's that 0.764 Fibonacci number. And we can see it's pretty pretty resilient level. Price continues to hold that level. So that in this case, we'd have a second pattern now on the hourly chart. We knew to highlight that number. We knew to focus on that number because what happened all the way back on that daily chart, now we're using an hourly chart. We could see that same pattern here held. Now, it traded through it, but it closed above it. It couldn't close below it, so it closed above it. So that's a legitimate level right there where we, we start to understand, hmm, we see that market holding up. This may be uh, a tendency we're going to look for. Now, let's. this is a 60-minute chart. Let's scroll all the way down to a 15-minute chart here, what we'll do is we'll leave this line on here so we know it's a significant line. I'll mark it, and we can take the frame away so the frame's not getting in the way there. I'm going to mark that level right there, and we know that's a, another 764. So 
so we have the first 764 drawn on the daily, the seven, the second 764, that's drawn on a 60-minute chart. Now we're going to drop down to a 15-minute chart, and we're going to see if that's going to be any help. And so we can see here the market bottomed on 726. That happened to be a Thursday. Now we're going to see if we see that pattern again. And again, what we're doing is we're highlighting the fractal nature of markets, how we see these patterns replicate themselves over and over again. So we're taking that low on 726 uh, to this high during the European session on 727. And look what happens again. See 764, that Fibonacci important number 764. And it's only important because the market gave it to us. We didn't determine the number, although it happens to be a Fibonacci number. The market determined that number for us uh, on that daily chart. So once again, you can see 764 extremely influential number for the market this is the third time now we're seeing the third pattern that it's bottoming on that same number the 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 first one i can go all the way out to the weekly we could see it then i drop down to the the hourly and you see it again here and all the way down to the 15 minute and we could see it there so when we have three patterns like that we better be aware let's drop all the way down to a three minute and you could see it again you may know a little something about candlestick formations and we could call this a double bottom or we could call that also a head and shoulder bottom right with this the left shoulder here's the head and here's the right shoulder and and you need to know that you need to know you have three patterns aligned and they all happen to be that same pattern this is this typifies uh, fractal geometry scalability and we would definitely encourage you to pull out your dollar yen chart so you could see that pattern for yourself and you see how helpful that is for us as traders. When you have three patterns aligned, you need to know that you know it really highlights for us the importance of fractal geometry in the markets. Now, we can go back to that 60-minute chart, and we can clean out some of those lines on there. And the big question is, will this, this pattern we see continue? Well, we can't say for sure because market movement is by no means predetermined, but it certainly helped us to identify this level that we want it to be there when you had a buy signal. And you definitely would want to know to be looking at this particular level right here in search of a buy setup. We believe that understanding the fractal nature of markets will make you a better trader, and we're confident that our courses at Trading University will put you on the right path. Market movement and trading will always be a fascinating study, and one that can be very rewarding and very dangerous because you can lose. If you're going to find consistent success at trading, you need both education and experience. Trading University. See you soon.